So, this is what I would do. If you can settle down and let me speak, uh, that will be wonderful. Thank you. So, this is what I would do. I would uh, briefly explain the cutting plane method. And uh, there was a little bit of confusion. In fact, there was quite a bit of confusion with regard to how to determine the visibility using the cutting plane method. Um, I would actually uh, tell you not to worry about that. So, find the intersection between the two planes using the cutting plane method and then use the projection method to figure out the visibility. So, I will talk about that. Okay. <clears throat> so, let me get started cutting plane method. So, stay with me all right. So, given two planes A B C and D E F we figure the line of intersection between these two planes using the cutting plane method. So, the trick is very straightforward pretty much along the lines of uh, what we had discussed uh, when we uh, studied the interaction between a line and a plane. You just imagine that you have to treat one of the planes as planes and the other plane as a set of three lines. Okay, for example, uh, you can treat plane A B C as plane A B C and D E F as a set of three different lines. Okay. Now, for example, if I treat D E F as a set of three different lines, let me pass an imaginary cutting plane through the edge D V and let me call it C P 1. Okay. Now, this edge D B is going to be intersecting with A B C at this point and this point. Okay. So, between an imaginary cutting plane and the plane A B C what do you expect? Do you expect a line of intersection or a point of intersection? Line right project this point up. So, this point will be lying on A B project this point up it lies on A B this point it lies on B C project that point up this would be the line of intersection between the imaginary plane that passes through D E and the plane A B C and that would be the projection of that line. Okay. Now, this line is going to be intersecting the edge D E at this point. Okay. So, this point would represent the point of intersection between the line D E and the plane A B C fine with me so far no yes good take another plane that plane passes through D F let me call this C P 2 this plane is going to be intersecting A B C at this point and this point. So, this point lies on A B this point lies on B C project this point up on A B lies over here project the other point from here lies on B C this would be the line of intersection between the plane A B C and the imaginary plane C P 2. Now, the corresponding point of intersection will have to lie on D F. Okay. So, to get that point of section you have to extend D F okay, and get this point of intersection. So, it is ok for that point of intersection to not lie on a plane and a line as of now. So, this is your first point of intersection this is your second point of intersection join these two guys and the line segment that would be the line of intersection between the two planes has to be common between both planes. So, this would be the line of intersection drop that down and you would get the corresponding projection in the front view straightforward with regard to computing the line of intersection between the two planes. Now, to get the visibility go for projection. Now, I chose this view for absolutely no reason I could have chosen the top view I could have performed the same thing and I could have expected the same result. Okay. I could as well well I could have treated A B C as a set of three lines instead of D E F 
I could have still expected the same result. I could have as well chosen this as my cutting plane. Okay, the result would have been the same. So keep that in mind. Are you with me now? Yes. Now to figure out the visibility using projection method. So a few lectures ago I said that um, I did not get any logic behind the projection method but it looks like there is some logic and the logic is as follows. First things first you realize that all these edges they are going to be visible. All these edges they will be visible. Okay. Even the line of intersection will be visible. So keep that in mind. So we need to figure out the visibility of this segment, this segment, this segment, this segment, this one, this one here, and this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one here. Okay. Now look at this point for example. Drop a vertical. What would this point represent? What would this point represent? Is it a common point between two edges? Is it a common point between two edges? No. The edges may be intersecting at that point, may not be intersecting at the point. Okay, so the edges are DE and BC. So DE is like so, for example, and BC is like so, for example. Okay, now what you see is the top view, and what you see is this point here. Look at my finger and the thumb of the right hand, and finger and the thumb of the left hand. So these two points, they are at the same position in both edges in the top view. Okay, now which of the sticks is visible to you or is it closer to you? The one on my right hand, the one on my right hand or the one on my left hand? Right hand. It's visible, right? You could see that. Okay? But there it's not clear. Now what I would do is I would just flip this over so that you could see the front view of this. Once again, I would just flip it up so that you could see the front view containing the projections of these two lines. Which of the points is up? This guy here, right? So that's up. Okay? Here it's visible, here it's up. Once again, it's visible here in the top view, in the front view, it's above this point. The logic is precisely the same. If you drop a vertical from here, okay, whichever edge is up in height in the front view will be visible in the top view. Logic is precisely the same. So if you drop a vertical from here, okay, DE seems to be getting hit before BC, na? right? So it is this portion of DE that would be visible and therefore solid. Agreed? Okay. How about this one? If I drop a vertical from this intersection point, so now that's intersection between EF and BC, which of the edges will be encountered first by this vertical? BC. So that means that BC is going to be visible here. So this portion is going to be visible here and therefore it's going to be solid. With me? Okay. Now if you look at this one back again, so it is DE which is visible. When this portion is visible, this portion of ABC should be hidden. Yeah. One thing more that you would want to notice what is what has this intersection, line of intersection done to this edge? It has changed the status of that edge. 
So, this edge was visible from B up till the point of intersection and from here it is hidden ok. Likewise also you can expect something very similar over here. So, this is visible here and from this point onwards edge D E should be hidden yeah you can verify that for this vertical what do you expect what do you expect for this vertical point of intersection between D E and A B A B gets hit first. So, it is A B which is visible right and of course, this will be hidden and likewise you can figure out uh, visibility. Same thing from this view also. So, extend a vertical upwards from any of these points of intersections see which of the corresponding edge is hit before and that edge is going to be visible in this same same logic with me everybody absolutely confident <laughs> all right so this is what i would do this is what i would do i would distribute the question papers i have them i have them question 1 question 2 two questions relax i give you enough time to solve these questions okay so i will give you a single paper and these two questions are on the two sides of that paper okay while you are solving that for reference I will keep this slide in front of you. So, that if you are stuck you can refer to this and solve So, this is the uh, front view of the object this is the auxiliary plane 1 auxiliary plane 2 and uh, looks like I will be able to show the two shapes only in or only using auxiliary planes not otherwise. Now, the question is this given the partial auxiliary views of this object containing two shapes of the planes of faces if we have to draw the orthographic projections like the full top view and the side view of this object is it possible for us to do that that is what the question is ok. So, this is the object and we would like to draw the full top view of this and full side view of this. Now, this part is straightforward. I can always take vertical projections ok uh, draw the square or rectangle or whatever. So, this part is going to be visible this edge will be hidden ok and likewise I can take the vertical projections from these edges. So, likewise this edge is going to be hidden over there ok I can take the vertical projection from there this edge is going to be visible likewise this edge ok and over here vertical projection up horizontal horizontal the center line ok and now the question is how do we transfer the features over here onto this part of the drawing in top view how do we do that. Step 1 break this arc into a number of segments. right and then look at these projections transfer these projections over here and from here up to the top view ok. So, these two points they get transferred over here let us first look at the bottom face from here 
transfer them up right there. Second thing, transfer these two points over there. Likewise, the center line up there. Okay. And here comes the critical part. Now of course, these two views they are going to be separated by a hinge line. How do you find the position of this hinge line? Okay. Now to do that, look at this feature and compute the distance or take the distance of this point from the hinge line over here. Okay. This feature is going to be lying where? Where? Over there? Yeah? Take it up. This feature is going to be lying over there. Measure that distance. Okay, and then look at the hinge line. So once you have the hinge line, now it becomes a lot easier for you to transfer whatever distances you're going to be measuring over here up to here. Same thing, the concept of auxiliary planes. Now, so this view happens to be the common view. Okay, get the distances from the auxiliary plane, and then transfer all of them onto the top view. Straightforward. Clear? Clear? So I don't have to speak much. Get this distance. Now this point lies on this vertical projection. This one. Measure that. Get that distance. This one lies over here. Measure that. Get this distance from here to here. This guy lies over here. Measure that. Straightforward. Okay. Now take this distance and place it over there. Likewise, take this distance, place it over there. Okay. So it looks like you have gotten these points to lie on some sort of arc. Okay. This is how the arc is going to look like. And so this is the bottom arc. Remember that. So this is the arc corresponding to this part of the object. You could do the same thing for the top part of the object. Okay. Real quick. Same thing for the top part of the object. So the top part, the top arc is going to be visible, so it's going to be solid. The bottom arc apparently is also going to be visible. Look at this. So this part is going to be visible, therefore solid. This part is also going to be visible, therefore solid. Okay, and then this edge is going to be visible. Right? How about the circle? So there is a void over here at the bottom surface, there's a void over here at the top surface. Okay? Treat them one by one. Same thing, same distances concept. So divide the circle also into equal parts and take distances of the points lying on the circle from the hinge line and transfer them. So once you understand the basics, it's all straightforward procedure. Transfer the distances. And this corresponds to the circle on the top face or the bottom face? Top face. Likewise, do the same for the bottom face. I'm just transferring distances. There are going to be many lines. I'm just transferring distances. Okay, so this is possibly this part of the circle. Okay and a part of which is going to be visible in the top view. So this would be solid. The other part, the same thing, transfer distances. Okay, a part of this circle is going to be visible, so this would be solid, the rest will be hidden. Okay. Do precisely the same thing on the other side. Okay, now for that you are going to be using 
this auxiliary view. Precisely the same thing. Measure distances and transfer distances. Okay, when you do that, you would get that part of the arc. Now, this part of the arc is going to be visible. This arc on the top face is going to be visible. How about the bottom face? The arc corresponding to the arc lying on this face? Not visible, that will be hidden. Okay, how about the circles or circular voids? Same thing. So, the void on this face is going to be visible. The void on this face, a part of it is going to be visible, a part of it is going to be hidden. So, this part is visible, this part is hidden. Okay. Now, you can do a smart thing, observe the following, the shape of this arc and the shape of this arc, what do you observe, are they the same or different, they are the same. So, if you get one arc all you need to do is transfer the corresponding points over here okay, by equal distances and then get the other arc. Likewise, from the other side. So, once you get this arc, okay, just shift this arc by some amount. What is that amount going to be? What is that amount going to be? That amount is going to be this, is it? Is it? Yes or no? It gets so this arc gets shifted inward by about this amount, no? Yeah, likewise from there. So this arc gets shifted by about this much amount. Right? Side view again, the same thing. Yeah, of course, finish uh, the top view by adding center lines. So, side view again is very similar concept. So, I will not say much, just that I will show you the animation. Okay, so, if you had asked what we had been doing in the last 5 or 10 lectures, we actually had been preparing a primer for such problems. What if the planes are not parallel to the convention, conventional orthographic planes x y y z and x z what happens then. So, we have to take the help of auxiliary views and that is the reason why we call them auxiliary planes helping planes. So, unless and until you get the true features in the auxiliary views you will not be able to capture them in conventional orthographic projections. Any questions? Any questions? Are you with me on this? Everybody? Everybody? So, I have made the speed of this animation quite slow, so that I can follow what is going on. Um, the lab next time that you are going to be uh, doing, I think that is going to be after the midterm break is it or huh? after the midterm break. So, that is that is when you are going to be solving these problems. Jan 25th with me. So, while you are watching this, I have the benefit of having not many of you. 
so we can talk about the exam okay it's going to be a 4 hour exam the intense 7 questions 4 hour exam the first badge is going to be writing the exam between 9 and 1 4 hours the second badge is going to be writing the exam between 2 and 6 we will do something very similar to what we did last time we will have to quarantine batch 1 okay, for half an hour and then we will have to let batch 2 in and only then batch 1 gets released. Now this time what I have done is I have just reversed the batches. So batch 1 uh, in the mid sem is now batch 2 and badge 2 is badge 1 ok. The questions are going to be tough the questions are going to be tough it might happen that uh, 4 hours may not be adequate for you to solve these questions ok. I will think about whether I should be providing you some uh, sample questions or sample paper or not I will think about that ok, but I would request you guys to practice and practice hard because these concepts are difficult to follow. So, unless you practice you will not be able to get these concepts and if you do not get these concepts you will not be able to solve the questions. No, so the questions will be from perspective till development perspective one question on perspective three questions on lines and planes one question on this one question on intersection and one question on development seven questions huh? oh you have to wait for five more lectures so we haven't yet uh, discovered oh we haven't yet uh, discussed interpenetration of solids and development so five more lectures yeah none this was the bonus quiz 10 marks straight out 10 marks getting added to your score straight out what 200 200 marks seven questions 40, 35, 35, 20, 20. <laughs> I can give you the paper if you want. Huh? None. What? What is the meaning of a bonus question? To me, it means uh, you get extra credit for extra work. added it is more so um, if you have let us say 8 questions for example ok um, essentially you can get 120 out of 100 uh, as in the mid exam ok. So, I must warn you um, if you are not careful in the labs that you are going to be working now or if you are not careful in the lectures to come if you are not attentive um, it might be a little difficult for you. In your position I would probably try to understand everything that I learn from now on ok. I am here I am committed so I can give you n number of extra classes I am committed the question is are you. I just want to make sure that you understand. Okay. What you guys are already tired of tier 101, is it? Uh, this is something interesting. Um, a few days ago, uh, myself uh, and two colleagues of mine, Professor Sudhir Mishra and uh, Professor Joydeep Datta, mathematics and civil engineering. So we are having dinner and we are having conversation. So. TA 101 sprung up and uh, we started discussing TA 101 and uh, I was I am on camera, but I will be honest 
Okay, so, uh, you know, I, I kind of confessed uh, that um, I was having a hard time teaching TA 101. Uh, looks like I am not able to deliver the concepts properly. And my students are having a hard time. I mean, uh, I look at their faces, I look at their eyes, and they're like, and uh, I, I really wonder if I'm doing a good job in uh, teaching TA 101. And uh, they said, um, well, I mean, things become a little difficult, starting from uh, space geometry, a lot of imagination, a lot of uh, visualization. And uh, Professor Jagdi Dutta, he's a mathematician. Right? So he's like, yeah, what's the use of TA 101? <laughs> I mean, why, why are you teaching TA 101? And Professor Sudhir Mishra is like, you know, you have to teach the language of drawing. <laughs> I mean, you have to teach the language of drawing. I mean, you have to be able to convey without using words what you mean, okay, when you have conceived a design, for example. What you want to convey when you, have to, when you have conceived a design. You should not be able to use a single word. Like, for example, if a designer from there comes to a manufacturer from here, he or she would come with a drawing, and he or she would be able to interpret without an exchange of a single verbal word. That's what he meant. Seemed, seemed OK. Um, but then I began thinking, and I was like, you know, the first thing that you conceive, the first idea that you conceive, if you want to convey it to yourself, and if you want to develop it further, what do you do? You take a paper, you take a pen, and you draw a line, you draw a curve, you draw a sketch. That's the first thing you would do when you want to conceive an idea and develop it further. Okay? This helps you with that. This helps you with that. No numbers involved, no words involved, only drawing. It helps you imagine things a lot better, if you're doing it right. So it is important. Take Kriti, for example. Or, you know, Galaxy. You know, this is art. Production in Galaxy, you build structures, I've seen that. You build huge structures. Many of them are new ones, many of them are new constructs. What do you do in there? You imagine things. You try to convey new ideas. Okay, but this is where, this is your foundation. This is where you develop, this is your factory. This is where you develop the ideas. Build it. Convince yourself that your idea is going to work. And then, implement your idea. But this is how important TA 101 is. 101 is basic course to thinking and analyzing. Think and analyze, only to jump. But I still convey, uh, I, I, still, I still have this feeling that I'm having a hard time conveying what I know or what I don't know to you. So, hopefully things will get better from here, with only five lectures to spare. All right, so I won't, um, I, would, I would release you because you have a quiz at 6 o'clock. Hmm? So.